Hey folks, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to talk feeds and speeds and I'm going to show you how to dynamically generate G-code patterns for testing. But before that, let's get some chips on this mill. Oh come on, what do you expect from a British guy? Before I dive right into the feeds and speeds and the Excel spreadsheet that I want to share with you, I just want to show you I did actually make something on this mill already. I threw some chips about and I made a Star Trek com badge just for fun really. Just was the only design I had. I 3D printed it a while ago and I made it into a cam part really quickly. The mill performed really well. I was actually impressed. It, it was slow but um, and actually I had a few uh, hiccups along the way so I adjusted my recipes as I went. I got a functional part at the end so um, it gave me a really good starting point for what you're about to see in a moment. Well, this part wasn't completely straightforward and it made me realize I need to get more scientific about the feeds and speeds and understand exactly what works for this machine. The Tag is never going to be a Haas or a DMG Mori. It doesn't have the rigidity or anything so I just need to make sure I understand what works and what doesn't. So let me take you through my spreadsheet and show you how I did that. So I built an Excel spreadsheet that generates G-code and you can see the G-code here. And this is how it works. What it does is it assumes you've got a piece of a square stock and you're starting on the left front corner. What it'll do is for step one it will move backwards by the width of the cut, it will move downwards on the Z by the depth of the cut, then it will go all the way across the workpiece at the feed rate that you set here. Once it's done it'll move out by like a clearance distance on the Y, move back all the way to the X, move up and then set zero again so that you're ready to keep on rerunning this cycle. And the beauty of this spreadsheet is that I could change any one of these parameters and you'll see the G code change here. So I could change the depth of cut to five millimeters, it changes there. I could change the feed rate. You only need to set feed rate once because as long as feed rate's been set then all the G1s will be correct. Actually I've just noticed that should have been a G1. Once you do that, then this G-code will update here, and you can just copy and paste this straight into your G-code interpreter, whatever your program is to run your CNC machine. Just paste this in as a script or a macro and press play, and that's what I've been doing on CNC.js. I just press play, and it reruns this over and over, and you just change your parameters each time. I used, uh, this is actually stolen from the NYC CNC Excel cookbook here, so I can actually use this to say I, I've put I've got one flute and we're in at 6,500 RPMs, and so I can see that I need about 6.5 inches a minute to get one thou per tooth, which is 165 basically metric inches per minute. So I'm using this recipe here and these figures here to generate my tests. And what I've done is I've got various depths of cut that I'm going to try. With my end mill size, that means these are the different percentages of the width of the end mill that I'm going to be moving back by. And I'm going to try different feeds, and I'm going to plot on here. I can use this little sheet here to plot when I do a test. Let's see this in action then. So first thing it's going to do is move backwards, and then down. And then it's going to move all the way across the part. It's just a dry run, so it's not cutting at this point. Going to move all the way across at the feed rate that you specified in the spreadsheet and then it's going to move forward by the clearance amount that you set. And that's a rapid and it's going to wrap it all the way to the left again. And then it'll move in and move up and it'll reset the Y so you're ready to go again but you're already one set of depth of cut further back. So now I'm going to do a real cut and it's going to move across the metal now and it's going to start cutting. You see I'm throwing some chips out. And all I did then was rerun the same macro, so I went back by the same depth of cut, same width of cut, and the same feed rate. And there we go. Let's move through. And I can do this as many times as I want, just by changing the parameters in the spreadsheet. Okay, so back to our plan. So we're going to do a bunch of different cuts here. We're going to change the depth of cut each time, so you can see how it looks and how the chips come out. We're going to do depth of cut for 1 mil, then 1.25, then 5, then 1.75, and then 2 mil. So I guess we're ready. Let's get started.
I'm feeling brave now. I've actually got some really good results cutting from one to two millimeter depth of cut. So what I'm going to start doing is increasing the feed rate this time. So I've been been feeding it at 165 millimeters per minute because that's one thou per tooth, which is about the lowest you possibly want to go. So I'm going to go next for 180, 190, 210, and we'll see how far we can get. Hopefully I don't push it too far, but since these are done, I'm going to stay with a 2mm depth a width of cut because it's working pretty well, and I'm just going to up the feed to 280, 195 and so on, and we'll see how it goes. Advanced warning, this is where things went horribly wrong. Up at 240mm a minute, which is almost 10 inches per minute, and I'm pushing it too far. I'm putting too much material into the end mill at this point, so although it's cutting pretty well, everything looked okay to start with, suddenly it starts pulling out the end mill. I just did not get to the emergency stop in time. At this point, it's cutting almost 20mm into the material, so it just can't cope with that. Goodbye, end mill. I'm not upset. I've learned so much through this exercise. I have a really good understanding of what feeds and speeds work now. I'm starting to get to know this machine and what it can cope with, and that's worth an end mill or two. So we wreck the mill? Yeah, we wreck the mill. The take has a tilting column, and that is a good design feature if you want to use it to do chamfers. Unfortunately for what I'm doing, which is just straight milling, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. It's drifted a few times on me now and starting to get a bit out of hand. I am pushing the limits of what this machine can do already just by running test patterns. I'm using relatively large end mills for my test cuts and I could go down and use smaller end mills and I would get a much better finish and I would also not wreck the mill quite so readily. That's going to mean that removal rate of material is fairly slow. So for the next video I've actually got a handful of Lakeshore carbide end mills. So we're going to try those rather than these single flute cutters that I've been using just because I had those on hand. So thanks for checking out the video. I appreciate everybody's support. Hopefully I'll see you again on the channel soon. Bye for now.